Hey there, Postal here. Let's see, what are we up against here? We're at tier 6 battle. Mm, tier 26. Mm. Mm. We're against the kind of planes that aren't necessarily the best kind of planes to go against when you're in this plane. But what is this plane? This is the F5F. Um, we are going to see what we can do in this plane. And we're going to see if this is a plane that you want to be spending 32 freaking dollars on. Spoiler alert, probably not. Um, yeah, that was a bad bomb drop, I don't care. But you know what, I don't really care about my bad bomb drops in this plane, because one of the, one of the perks of this plane... Oh, my bombs actually did drop is that the bombs reload very, very quickly. So this is a tier five American heavy fighter premium plane. Um, that doesn't really play like a heavy fighter though. Um, you know, it's got big heavy fighter engines, but pretty small multi-role sized airframe. Um, the guns, as you can see, are not Heavy Fighter-esque. At least not what most people would uh, suspect they want in a Heavy Fighter. In fact, trying to kill this Spitfire 5 might... Well, luckily it's turning the opposite way of me. If he had turned towards me, that would have been my death. Um, this plane just doesn't have that kind of firepower. And it's really its biggest downfall. Don't get me wrong, the F5F can do very, very well. Heck, maybe even this battle will go well for me. But it's not going to be doing, you know, the typical heavy fighter stuff. In fact, I try to play this plane more like a multi-role. Because I feel like it does better in that kind of role. Um... Yeah, you've actually got really good maneuverability on this particular plane. Um, you have, uh, for a heavy fighter, of course, you got pretty good airspeed. The kicker to this plane, the thing to like trick up its sleeve, is these big engines do make it very good at. Oh shoot! Freaking Spitfire again. Uh, make it very good at just diving straight up. What in the hell is going on here? That's what I get for coming after Spitfire, I guess. I guess I'm just gonna keep on moving along then. See where those guns can be frustrating and doing nothing. Let's see if I can use my engine speed here. Probably burn out anyway. Nope, barely have some hit points left. We're gonna just need to keep on moving here. And we'll go along. Yeah, so you can see exactly what the issue with these guns is. Like, if I was in a BF-110, or a P-38, or a freaking Bowfighter, um, whatever I was just going against would be completely toast, right? This guy out. Ah, bad timing. Everybody, the brothers over here. Just gonna keep ourselves out of trouble. See if I can keep myself alive for a little while longer. Looks like we can. All right, we'll get this. Uh, hopefully, get rid of this guy, and then we'll move along to their military base. Anyway, my bombs have been back for a while now. I haven't had the opportunity to use them. Again, it's a perk of this plane. It's the 60 second reload. You can see the ridiculousness of these guns. And it's just, it's the main reason why I don't necessarily recommend this plane. Especially in the package that they've got it going on right now. Um, if it was just, you know, a standard tier 5 premium plane to purchase, okay, it could be worth it. But the only way you can get it right now is spending $32 on steel crates and gold. Which conceivably could be worth it if you happen to get something good out of your steel crates. 
But if you're just over there, like if you're just spending $32 to get this particular plane, uh, I can't, I can't recommend it. Um, and, and this is coming from something, I actually enjoy the plane, don't get me wrong. I actually like flying this plane. But I also know that I got the freaking thing for free. And I've got plenty of other planes if I'm not in the mood to fly this. Go play another another plane. Yep. Okay, multi roll behind this kill me. Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, off the top of my head, SE one hundred be be a better tier five heavy fighter to get. Because it's European, it can be any nation, and it frickin' has heavy fighter guns. How nice is that? Being able to like just shoot stuff and have it die. Yeah, it doesn't have the maneuverability, or for that matter, the airspeed of this particular plane. But you've got your uh, flying tank at tier 5 with the SC-100. Or the F-5F, you're kind of more of a subtle, heavy massager. <laughs> Rather than something that's going out there and just, you know, pummeling things to death. Alright, let's, um, let's see what we can do. So you've got to keep that kind of multi-role mentality going. If you try to try to push your weight around, you're going to realize you don't weigh as much as the other heavy fighters out there, and you're going to have some struggles, right? Let's see if I can't drop these bombs really quick. Bombs dropped. And let's move. Let's go on our way. Here we go. Excellent, so that bomb drop plus the um, that kill allowed me to get this sector, which is good. We're capping sectors. But again, we're doing it in a multi-role kind of fashion. I really am confused by the designation as a heavy fighter. Um, it kind of seems like it's a pocket XP-50, right? Do you know that tier 6 American... Um, premium heavy fighter kind of flies like that I've never flown an XP-50 but from what I've seen of it that's what it reminds me of and besides that I don't really feel like this is a heavy fighter probably die to this guy's rear guns before I kill him ah oh. Ah, oh, I really did not need to lose more hit points. Let's see, before I do any more attacks. Oh shoot, here comes somebody that's gonna kill me in half a second. Oh, he doesn't have rear gunners, so that's good. But, I do not have a good angle on him. Now I do. See if I can get my guns on target. So at least it's not the bow fighter. At least it's something that's not going to kill me with its rear gunner. And he wasn't able to get his guns on me, so I'm able to get that kill. Um, we've got our bombs back. Not that that really matters right now. We need to just get our hit points back. So we'll aim for this guy. Get a kill secure out of that. Kind of sort of tapping here because I know even though my guns don't overheat very quickly, which they don't, it is a perk of these crappy guns. They do not overheat very well, very badly, very quickly, but they don't do very much damage as compensation for not overheating. You're gonna get a lot of assists out of this, aren't I? gonna kill this dude here. This guy on like two hit points. Knowing my luck that guy was gonna get behind me. Look at F4F is freaking multi-roll. F5F not. Alright. The enemy is almost defeated. Who we got left? That freaking there he is. Nope. Game over. Proud of you pilots. Head back home. So again not a terrible game. By not necessarily a terrible plane. But I don't know, I just can't justify 
some of the things that are going on for this plane. Let's head back and let's do some comparis comparisons. All right, so we'll do a quick end plates um, look here. Not that this is really all about the end plates here, but 13 kills, 3,500 damage. Uh, did some ground damage, got four assists, yada yada yada. Um, you know, put in put in some decent work, right? And I find, and I'll, I've mentioned it once, I've probably mentioned it twice. Um, I find that I tend to have a better impact in this plane when I fly it like a multi roll. And we'll, we'll do some comparisons here to kind of just show off the differences between these planes. So you look at something like the Key 45. You go, wow, you know, you've got basically the same maneuverability, technically quite a bit lower just because of my pilot is what's, what's really building that up. You've got better airspeed for sure, better altitude performance. Um, the bombs are technically better on the Skyrocket, and I'd say they are just because you get a faster reload. But it's the gun armament that you're like, oh man, the Q45 really, really has that outstanding 37, and you've got 120 millimeter cannon. All right. Well, I mean, that's 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 you know one plane. That's the tourney fighter plane, right? Well, let's compare it to the the other American um, heavy fighter that's out there. Well, you've got the P-38F at tier five. Excellent altitude performance, and that's really based on P-38F's overall ability just to go high. The the optimum altitude is significantly higher than the F-5F. Maneuverability and, and the P thirty eight F is pretty maneuverable. It is still less maneuverable than the F five F. Pretty good airspeed with the P thirty eight F, but it's it's um, pulled down by the fact that you've got all these bombs and rockets on the P thirty eight, and so that tends to slow it down. I think I've got my rockets off right now, right? It's kind of weird. Oh, oh, I've just got the two bombs instead of the rockets. Oh. Huh. Well, so you could have the rockets or you could have the bombs. For whatever reason, I've got the bombs right now. Um, but it's still, the size of the bombs and the rockets still slows you down your, your overall airspeed on that particular plane. So you got to keep that in mind. But it's still pretty darn good airspeed. And then you've got really good guns. You've got a 37 millimeter cannon, again. And you've got four 50 cal machine guns. Really good damage output, right? Even just in one pass, you can put out a lot of damage. BF-110E, one of the most underappreciated, I think, to, um, you know, heavy fighters in the game. You're stuck between the, the really good BF-110B and the really good ME-410 um, at Tier 4 and Tier 6, respectively. This plane is absolutely excellent. And so if you compare this BF-110E to the, the F-5F, it's, you know, better guns. The airspeed is showing as less, but I don't have a pilot in, in the BF-110E. The airspeed is, is less, but not as bad as it's showing off here. The, the maneuverability is a lot worse than the BF-110E. And the altitude performance is, is basically on par with the F-5F. What this F-5F really compares well to you know, is going to be some of the multi-rolls out there that I mentioned. It's because it's maneuverability is up there. It's why the Key 45 can be compared to a multi-roll, except the Key 45's got the freaking hard-hitting guns. I mean, who has a 9 on the rating for guns when you're when you're a heavy fighter? That's just kind of silly, right? Nothing else does at this tier. Um, and this is, this is, you know, with my chances of crits and fires and all that stuff being maximized, basically, on this plane because I've got my P-51H pilot in here. So yeah, the guns, they don't they don't overheat very quickly. But they don't do a lot of damage very quickly either. They just, they, it's anemic. Um, again, the, the trick up this car, this card, the, this plane's sleeve isn't even necessarily it's straight up altitude performance, but it's straight up climb. If we compare the rate of climb to any other tier five plane, the rate of climb is significantly higher on the F5F. Just significantly higher. I mean, it makes the bow fighter look like a, like a freaking slug, which it kind of is. And, and that's, its big, that's its big trick, is instead of diving down to get away from planes, you dive up. Have some boost saved, and you can out-boost them up, as long as they're not like right on your tail already. Um, and you can get away from planes because these big engines on such a small airframe 
mean that you're going to be able to get yourself away. But all things considered, if you're just looking for a tier 5 premium, this is the plane you want as far as a heavy fighter is concerned. Um, you have Look at the gun armament on this plane. You have four 20mm cannons on the front here. You absolutely destroy planes. This plane right here is basically the opposite of the F5F. Worse airspeed, worse maneuverability, worse overall altitude performance. No bombs to speak of. Um, but yet, I still recommend this plane over the F5F. The reason being is these cannons hurt so much. If you've ever been on the receiving end of an SE-100, a human in an SE-100, you know what I'm talking about. The cannon output is significant. Then, on top of that, you've got a rear gunner with another 20 millimeter cannon. Um, the same exact cannons actually as the forward firing cannon. This plane puts out a lot of damage forward and back. Yeah, it can't, you, you can't go high altitude. Yeah, you can't, you know, go in a high trajectory by any means. You will stall out. But the overall firepower of this plane makes it a heavy fighter. You've got decent, um, decent hit points as well for this tier. And so, there, just as a heavy fighter, this is a better, better heavy fighter because you're doing heavy fighter damage. But beyond that, this is a European plane, meaning that you can make this plane any nation you want. Mine right now is British, but if I wanted to change this, you know, what if I want to change this to be American? I could make an American plane. What if I want to change this to be a... I could even specialize this if I wanted to. What if I wanted to change this to be... Uh, German plane. What if I want, you know, I could change this to be anything. And you just go here, you change the nation. Want to be Japanese? Want to be, want to be Soviet? Then fine. You can do that. It's going to cost you 200,000 credits, I think. Oh, 100,000 credits. Um, not even 200, so 100,000 credits, which you'll probably earn back in, in like two battles max. Um, so because this is European, it can be any nation, and it just puts out the firepower that you want to see in your heavy fighter. And it's always available. SE-100 is always available. Sometimes it's even on discount um, for half off. So I just can't, this is another reason, I just can't recommend the F5F. Because the only way you can get it right now is by spending $32. If they had a non-$32 bundle, if they just had a, you know, $10 thing for, for your Tier 5 plane, okay maybe justify that it's ten dollars five dollars i don't even whatever whatever tier five premium costs sure we could justify that but spending 32 dollars even on like yeah you're getting steel crates yeah you're getting gold i get that honestly the steel crates and the gold make this plane only cost you know the five or, or seven bucks whatever it's going to cost but you're you're gambling at that point. Steel crates. I've gotten a I've won a bunch a bunch of steel crates. I've been gifted steel crates. I have yet to get anything of note out of my steel crates. Now keep in mind, obviously, I've got a lot of premium planes. Um, so the chance, like you know, even if I get some of the premium planes, it's probably going to be just the gold for it instead. But I have yet to get like, you know, anything anything that I was like, wow, guys, look, I got this this premium plane. I got this tier six or higher premium plane. I think I got one tier three premium and that was it. Um, and so like, you know, getting steel crates is a crapshoot and I can't recommend people going out and thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting steel crates and gold and I'm getting a decent tier five heavy fighter. I mean, yeah, that's, that's true. If you're playing the F5F like a multi-role and not a heavy fighter, if that's the play style that you want. But if you want a heavy fighter, get a heavy fighter and don't spend you know copious amounts of money on steel crates that could get you something cool or probably get you nothing um yeah it's just i don't i don't like the bundle i don't like the process um and most people that fly this plane don't like it again i'm actually pretty fond of it although it's not my first choice by any means when i go out in a tier 5 heavy fighter um but i typically enjoy flying it and i still don't recommend it it's just it's not a heavy fighter. People that go out in heavy fighters want stuff that's going to freaking wreck lives. Want things that are either going to be super fast or going to be super hard hitting or some combination of the two. And this plane's airspeed is meh. 
it's okay. It's it's pretty speedy. Like, don't get me wrong, but it's not so speedy that it like changes lives. Um, and the guns are so weak. Yeah, yeah. That's that's about what I got to say about it. Meh. Anyway, that's me on my soapbox again. If it comes out on you know, normal price for a tier five uh, premium plane, then sure, I'd say honestly it would be worth it just because it's a tier five premium and and. It's, there's not many bad tier 5 premiums. But if you're just set on like, I'm just going to get one tier 5 heavy plane premium, this is not it. You might want to wait for some other discounts or some other nifty plane to become available. But the, the F5F is not the plane that you want to spend $32 on. It just isn't. Um, yeah, I can't justify that. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Do you agree with my assessment? Do you happen to have the F5F? Is it lackluster to you as well? Are you playing it like heavy fighter and finding success where I'm not? Are you playing it like a multi role and finding more success like I am? Um, do you recommend it even at $32? Um, or is it something that you would recommend somebody wait on until a future time frame or until it's just cheaper? Because luckily I was able to you know grind this out and get the get the plane for free. I didn't mind the grind. Maybe that's why I like the plane a little bit more than uh, some other people out there because I got it for free. But a lot of people got it for free. Tier 5 premium grinds are not uh, overly difficult. So, who knows? It's all speculative. Thank you so much for joining me, and have yourself a great day.